So good morning, everybody. My name is Heinz Meyer from Ficker Services AG. I am located in Switzerland, in Zurich, and I'm the corporate system engineer for uh, solar roof and for roofing sustainability, which involves also cool roof applications. I would like to share with you my presentation on uh, cool roof markets and some practical experiences and some reference pictures in the next 15 to 20 minutes. The content of my presentation is focused on flat roofs, on, on uh, materials and applications to flat roofs. I'll show you some markets from our perspective and finally some conclusions. As mentioned, focus to flat roof is important because this is shown top right. I will not talk about tiles or shingles for um, steep roof or metal roofs, we just focus to flat roofs. And in this perspective, the main products or the main systems which are, are used are the single ply membranes. Single ply membranes, they are produced in a factory in really controlled conditions by different production means. You can get them in rolls usually with a quite substantial length up to 40 or 50 meters and uh, one to three meters width, which involves of course some, uh, some uh, weight. Um, this has to be respected on top sides. You can get single ply membranes in PVC or in TPO, polypropylene based, and they Usually, or in fact, for the, for the large areas, they always have a reinforcement layer, polyester grid or fleeces or combinations. Single ply membranes are fastened in two different ways, either mechanically with screws, or they can be bonded to the subconstruction of the roof. We call them adhered fastened membranes, and they always have welded seams to connect the um, the one or three meter wide rolls together to make them watertight. Single ply membranes are our best choice if you have uh, large areas, easy roofs, no um, obstacles on the roof like roof lights or air conditioned units, things like that. And we don't have to deal with chemicals on site. That's the good thing with the single ply membranes. But um, we also have and provide liquid applied membranes, or some also call them coatings in a more simplified level. The liquid, the liquid applied membranes, the lamps, they are fully bonded, means the entire area of the roof is covered and connected to the waterproof, waterproofing layer later on. Um, they are built on site, usually with a reinforcement as well. In uh, two steps, you have a base coat, you have a top coat, and in between you place your reinforcement layer. One can work with a one component liquid applied membranes or with two component lamps. And we have um, one very good advantage with the, with the lamps and the coatings especially in cases, we will see some reference pictures later on, in cases where you have obstacles on the roof and have to work around difficult shapes, and then the lamps are really the best option because with uh, much more stiffer single-ply membranes, it's, it's quite difficult to work around and to weld and keep these this, uh, roofs watertight. So we will see applications with lamps and easily will recognize why we also go for lamps. First of all, some pictures from, uh, about um, single ply membranes. On the left hand side, mechanically fastened roofs. On the bottom left picture, you see a seam, and uh, in the seam, we've, we have the fasteners with some uh, uh, washers, special washers, and the fasteners, they connect the membrane with the roof subconstruction. The seams are welded, as I mentioned, in the uh, second picture bottom. You see the welding machine. It's an automated welding machine with a speed up to 2-3 meters per second uh, per minute. Sorry. And um, this results in very reliable 
uh, closed seams, watertight for the whole service life of the building. On the right-hand side of the slide, you see the adhered or even self-adhered roofs. We usually have to work with chemicals on site. This is illustrated by this bucket and the roller. And on the bottom right picture, you see the build-up. It's completely bonded from top to bottom, from membrane to roof construction. The liquid applied membranes, the lamps, we have the 1K liquid applied membranes, usually applied with, with a roller. Liquid taken from the bucket, applied in a base coat to the roof substructure, and below the picture, usually the top coat is sprayed to have a very smooth surface on the reinforcement layer and the base coat. And on the right hand side, we see the two component lamb applied the base coat to components always with the machine and because um, curing is so quick and usually or in our cases always we need to apply a, a top coat a reflective top coat which is UV stable this is shown on the bottom picture right hand side Coatings, I also mentioned coatings, they are usually, they come without the reinforcement layer. This is usually just to upgrade existing roofs, uh, metal roofs, for example, on the left picture, without the reinforcement, but just to make an existing roof white or light colored to reflect the sunlight much better. Um, right hand side, there are also uh, combinations with base coat or base coats with fiber reinforcement. So we have some intermediate thing between the lamps where we have um, fabrics incorporated and the, the simple coatings. So you see you have a large freedom or a full choice of many, many different products and systems. When it comes to cool roof applications, the most important factor or value is the so-called SRI value, the so the reflection index SRI, and I give you some information on the on the level of of SRI. For example, in the top table, which is the table for single ply membranes, in case of initial values, means just applied. Um, we see SRIs of around 100 or even a, a bit above 100, and in case of solar reflective, really trimmed membranes for cool roofs, we are in the range of 110 or even above. Just to give you an, a comparison to other colors, a tan membrane or beige has an initial SRI of something like 70, 75, and the gray membrane, for example, an EPDM has something like 20 and can really go down to uh, even lower values. In case of lamb and coatings, we have the same pictures. We have something like 100 or above. And the interesting thing, or for the serviceability, the most interesting thing is what happens after a certain duration. We have the membrane, it's um, exposed on chop site. Depending on the surrounding, we have more or less soiling. And um, after, for example, three years, we have reduction, which are measured or were measured from Cool Roof Rating Council in the States. And in case of these um, single ply membranes, where we started at a level of 100 or 110, we could maintain levels after three years of uh, 80 or even 90 with the really solar reflective trimmed membranes. With the 10 membranes, we, we fall down to 65. And of course, in case of of gray or, or even uh, black. Um, this is not even noted here on this, uh, on this table because they are really not interesting for cool roofs anymore. So 90 something like the level we really or easily can maintain after three years and this is confirmed by CRRC and you find a link at the bottom of the slide uh, to CRRC, to the, their database, the product rating database, where you find all rated products with initial and with three-year values. 
So some information behind what does it mean? Um, I have a graph, I prepared a graph with uh, with the year, with the service life, the horizontal axis and a relative SRI in the vertical axis and we start with 100% SRI at year zero, means at the time of installation. And after three years, we have reduction, as you have seen before. Uh, we have reduction to maybe 90%, the red dot in best case, or 75%, or or maybe something like 80, 85% in our example. Now we go further on. What happens after 4, 5, 20 years? Question is, will we keep the SRI level at the same level like we had after three years? Or would it go down this way, which is a bit extreme, of course, but uh, in fact no one really knows or no one really knew before we started or CRC started to do this uh, series testing some years ago. And we know it looks something like that in the red curve after some years there is a um, recovering of, of the SRIs because we have some chalking of the single ply membranes. Um, question is how it looks after five, ten years. This is a bit uh, difficult to rate from now. Most important is that we compare the um, size or the area of the, you know, that we just compare the area under the curves. This is what I want to mention. That's most important. But nevertheless, um, usually we don't have time like 20 years to see how a single ply membrane um, develops. We don't even have three years time to wait um, to come with a product to market. So there was an intention and especially in, in the States, in Berkeley, and there is an ASTM standard in the meantime for a, a quick lab soiling method. It's the ASTM D78975. 15. Um, you start with um, accelerated weathering, you apply some defined soiling agent, you dry at um, something like 80 degrees C with infrared lamps, and then you, yeah, you weather again with UVA. And after three days or even less, you have a a sample, a soil sample, which you can measure in your device, which should simulate the status after three years. Of course, algae and moss development cannot be measured or um, artificially grown within three days, that's obvious, but the soiling effect can be shown quite simple. We tested the method with some of our products because there was quite a nice uh, a uh, nice timing effect in 2012. We sent some, like five or even more, products to CRRC for their three year aging process. Um, it's a process where three samples are exposed in three different locations, not um, cleaned during the whole time and taken back then to the labs measured and the average is then reported in the CRC product rating database. And this is what we see here in these groups of uh, columns. If you just look at the very left column group, the four columns which start with the dark blue one, this is the initial SRI value in 2012 measured by CRRC of a PVC membrane which we sent to them and after the three-year process, um, without cleaning, we dropped, or the SRI dropped, down to a level of uh, something below 80. And now, of course, we want to reproduce this drop or see how it behaves in the lab. So we took the same membrane, let it measure from a certified lab in the state at the beginning in 2015 then, and three days later, it was measured again. And of course, we hoped to end at the same level. 
which was not the case here, at least in the PVC um, example. But it uh, turned out in, with the other membranes, uh, why ever, um, we had very good, um, good reproduction. If you look at the second PVC, the SR type, at the second group of columns, so we had a quite similar behavior and, and some uh, better or less um, behavior or similarities in the other materials. The same, in fact, the same background of data here in the next slide. We just see the reduction factors. In the blue case, this is always the three-year aging process, so we had a reduction of 25% with the, with the CRC process of the soiling, and we had above 50% reduction in the lab soiling. You see in the right-hand um, versions here, we had a very good 10% um, reduction, a good similarity. Um, another PVC with uh, some other gap, but in the other way, so this means the, the really so the real um, exposed material behaved better than in the uh, worse in the lab. Sorry, um, I think there is still some development to make, and there are also intentions to transform this standard to Europe. Maintenance is always an important thing. You cannot leave your membrane, be it a single ply membrane or a liquid applied membrane, on the roof without maintenance. Um, what you can do is uh, you can clean your membrane just with the uh, water from a hose. You don't need to have a high-pressure water jet. But important is that you start um, not only after five years. In the picture on the right, you can see you can clean your membrane after five years. That's okay. That works. But the effort is much more than if you start, let's say, after year one and do this regularly. That's very important. Um, please don't use, just a side remark, don't use uh, wire brushes or um, really um, sharp or uh, scratchy things because you simply destroy or influence at least the top surface of your membrane. What about energy savings? I guess this was already mentioned in the um, lessons before. Um, this is a um, project, a real project from the United States, from Austin in Texas. It's a shopping center which was um, covered with a black EDM roof before 2000, and it had to be replaced by a new roofing membrane, and this was then a good situation to measure energy demand before and after, and also temperature on the roof before and after means on the black roof and on the white roof. This is what you see in the top um, diagram on the right-hand side. The black roof was measured with something like 76 degrees C and the white roof with 52. So there's a really substantial decrease of 25 or more than 20 degrees C. And this uh, is finally the reason to save a lot of energy, you see here the kilowatt hours per day. And with the black roof, uh, more than 3,300 kilowatt hours were used in a, in a regular summer day. And in case the year after, on an identical day, with a white membrane, the consumption was below 3,000 kilowatt hours, which is a reduction of 11%. And this means the estimated annual savings is something like one euro per square meter, which is quite a lot. Um, the second topic of my presentation are cool roof markets, or in fact, these are more reference pictures of some um, areas of the world. Often people talk about the so-called black-white belt when they talk about cool roofs. Black white belt to just mean um, in the zones which are marked here on the globe in black. It does not make sense to go with cool roof membranes. We have the equator also marked here. 
And in the white zone, which is now seen on the globe, there it only makes sense to go with cool roofs. Of course, this is a bit too black and white, I must say. Um, you find, of course, and this is shown in the next picture, you find uh, applications and really good applications also in, in the black belt. Um, some reference pictures from the United States, from Europe, from Asia, and from Latin America. We will see them in the next slides. I did not bring along reference pictures from Southern Africa and from Australia, but of course, and obviously, these are also cool roof zones. The first picture is a very typical picture for a membrane picture. It's the Dallas Cowboy Stadium in, in Arlington in, in the States. This is a, obviously a white membrane, large area, not much disturbance on the roof. Again, a white membrane. Here you could talk about or think about if in the center, where we see all this cool roof equipment, if here maybe a, a lamb could have been the better application. It's the California State Capitol in Sacramento. A very nice reference picture, I must say, important one. And now we go to Latin America. This is a production plant in Colombia. Really the typical picture for a membrane application. No roof lights, no air conditions on the roof. And a plant in Mexico also here. Um, you can see on the right hand side this is a refurbishment. This used to be a metal roof and it got insulated and finally a uh, membrane, a PVC membrane in this case, was applied on top, cool roof membrane or energy smart membrane also called. A picture from Uruguay. This is now a, a coating application because all these details here around these roof lights to do with single ply membranes to keep them watertight is a bit more labor um, intensive. So it was decided to go with coatings and the picture you have seen before already. This is just an upgrade of an existing plane manufacturing company in Spain where we used acrylic coatings. And another coating job from Spain. Here is a library of the Polytechnic University in Valencia. Um, you see again a lot of roof lights, a lot of detailing which are quite difficult to make in a serious way with membranes. And it's not a too crazy shape, but go this goes to this direction, irregular shapes, um, small applications, um, really good job for a PU membrane, a LAM. And another LAM application from Greece. They had to work around here, around these posts these existing posts to um, hold these ducts for this air conditioning. So the coatings or the lamps are really the best application method here for this type of installation. We go to Dubai. Also here we have some installation of ducts. This, um, in fact, is a membrane application. Uh, of course, over here there is no um, no real differentiation. I mean, you can go with membranes in these situations. Others go with LAM. This is the, the choice of the applicator, finally. You will find a product you like or you, you know to apply, apply how, always. And we go to Korea now, come to Asia. This is a light gray membrane um, applied to this nice wooden tourism center in uh, Korea. And maybe the most crazy, the craziest application in uh, Japan. It's a two-component PU membrane sprayed. Very nice application in the region of Mount Fuji. So the conclusion of my presentation. Cool roofs are a very important topic to fight against urban heat island effects. We have material around with SRIs, initial SRIs, 
well above 100 or 110. It's important that they are maintained, that they are cleaned um, from the very beginning on, and then we can achieve cool cooling energy savings, substantial ones over time, over the whole service life of a building. We can use, reduce the peak demand, electricity demand, and we can even calculate, and not just estimate, we can calculate the savings over time. Okay, this is my, or this was my presentation. Thanks a lot for your um, participation in this webinar, and I wish you a nice day today. Goodbye.